Assembly design tables allow you to create and control configurations of the assembly using a built-in spreadsheet within SOLIDWORKS. They are used to control suppression of components, mates, assembly features, configurations of parts, and numeric values of distance and angle mates. The assembly design tables are then used to create and document the assembly configurations. The options and procedures are very similar to a previous video I did on part design tables. So if you haven't seen that lesson yet, I recommend you go back and just review that one first. In this lesson, we are going to use an assembly design table to quickly create different configurations of it, which represent different versions of it, all within the one assembly file. Check in the description of this video to find a link to the exercise files if you'd like to follow along. These files were created in SOLIDWORKS 2020, so you will need SOLIDWORKS 2020 or newer to be able to open and use these lesson files. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let's begin the lesson. First begin by extracting the lesson files onto your computer somewhere that you can find easily, and then opening the main assembly file. The main assembly file should be called A001 Trolley Final. Our goal will be to add several configurations to the assembly using a design table. We will begin by creating the configurations that represent the handle at different heights. If we look closely at the handle, we'll see that there are different holes which will adjust the handle to different heights. In this assembly, there is a distance mate that is used to control the height of the handle. Switch over to the Configuration Manager tab and you can see we currently only have the default configuration. To create a design table, go to Insert, Table, and then Design Table. In the Properties box, make sure that Auto Create is selected and all the other options can just be left at their defaults. Click OK, give it a moment and you should see a pop-up come up asking to select a dimension. The dimension we want to use is this D1 Distance 2. So highlight that by clicking on it and then click OK. After another moment of loading, it should all be ready to go now. And to give ourselves a bit more room, we can just drag this out by carefully picking the corner and then dragging it out. And it's also worth noting that we can still zoom in and out in the graphics window and also pan around as well. Just make sure you don't double click outside of the table because that will exit the design table. So what you can see here is an Excel table inside of SOLIDWORKS and we use this to control our configurations. Because it is actually using Excel, if you are familiar with that program at all, it works the same way as how Excel works. So you can add all your cell data, use equations, copy and paste, anything like that will work in here as well. So for example, we might, might want to give ourselves a bit more room here. We could just drag these out to expand the cells a little bit. And what we want to do now is this column is going to be our configuration. So we can add some names in here to identify each of the configurations. We will do this by doing, um, the first one will be setting.50 and then setting.100. And because this is Excel, we can just drag these two cells and drag the bottom corner to auto fill out more cells. We only need one more in this case, so just add an additional setting.150. The table has the distance dimension assigned already, which is our leg height, and this is going to control the height of this handle. Each of these holes are intervals of 50 mils. So what we want to do with these extra configurations is make the handle step up in increments of 50 mils. The first thing we can do is just highlight this cell and again drag it down to auto populate the rest. As you do with Excel we can use equations so we can say equals leg height plus 50 and that's going to add 50 mils and then plus 100 and the final one will be plus 150. So that just means this is the default and then it's going to plus 50 plus 100 plus 150 for each step. Uh, it's actually going to retract the handle each step. Let's take a look at the configurations we have just created. So if we click outside of the design table, uh, it will exit out of the design table. You'll see a pop up saying that these configurations have been created. You can click OK to that. And we should see that our configurations are here, 100, 150, and 50. For some reason 50 is going on the bottom, so we can just click and drag this up to move below the default, and that will get our order back in the right. We can activate each of the configurations by double clicking on them. So we can go setting 50, and you can see the handle moves down. Setting 100, it's moved down again. Setting 150, and it's moved down to the final position. And we will just go back to the default, which will take it back to the beginning. 
We have so far created a design table that will represent various handle heights due to changing the distance mate by increments of 50 mils. Next, we'll create another configuration of this assembly to show how components can be either suppressed or resolved. To go back to an existing design table, make sure you're in the configurations tab and you should see a tables folder with a little arrow next to it. If you click on the arrow, it will expand it to show any design tables and we can see our design table there. Right click on it and go to edit table. Give it a moment to load. And if you see any pop-ups like this one come up, you can just click OK or cancel. Doesn't really matter. We don't need to change anything with that. And once it's loaded, we will see our design table is back on the screen. For this upright trolley positioning, we want to suppress these two smaller caster wheel sub-assemblies as they're not really needed when it's in an upright position. To do this, we click on the next uh, empty cell here and then we double click on the component or sub assembly and you can see that it's automatically filled it in for us and it's set the first one default to resolved. To make things easier you can also use the abbreviations R for resolved and S for suppressed but they need to be in capital letters. As all our configurations here are for when the trolley is in an upright position and the caster wheel sub assembly is not meant to be visible so they need to be suppressed we can then go through and just put a capital S in each of these configurations to make it suppressed. You may also note that there are actually two sub-assemblies of this caster wheel, two instances of it, if you will. And I'll show you how to deal with that in a moment. But first, we are going to suppress this first one. So we have done that. Click outside of the design table. Um, it will take a moment to load and we can see that the caster wheel is now gone. But if we change between our settings, the handle moves, and the caster wheel is still gone. Like I was saying though, this caster wheel also needs to disappear. So let's see how we can remove that one as well. We can do that, go back into our design table, give it a moment to load, and then cancel any pop-ups if they appear. What we could do is do the same process again, go in the next cell, double click on a component and suppress it. But you can actually suppress multiple or resolve multiple instances of a component or sub-assembly. We can do that. If you have a look in this field here, you can see there is a one at the end of it. And the one represents the number instance of that component. So what we can do, if you double click on that cell, just put a comma and then a two. And you could do this for multiple instances if you wanted to, like three, four, five, six, etc. cetera. Uh, in this case, we only have the two, so it's one comma two, enter. You can see it's updated and then just click outside of the table again. And you can see that both are now suppressed. If we zoom in a little closer, we can also there, see there are a couple of nuts that weren't exactly part of that sub-assembly and were just separate components. And we should probably suppress those as well. So let's, again, go back into our design table, allow it to load and cancel any pop-ups that come up. So we can just click OK or cancel to this pop-up. Don't need anything there. So in this case, we will have to use the new cell. So we can click on the cell, zoom in a little bit, double click on this one. So that is added it and we want them suppressed so we can add our capital S for each instance or each uh, configuration, sorry. And then we want a comma two at the end of this one as well, as we want to suppress both of these in the one data set. And then double click outside, but we can see that only one of them has suppressed. So what's going on here? Well, it's likely that this nut has been used in other areas, like maybe here or down here at the wheels or wherever. And the instance we defined as number two is not actually this one here. So how do we go and find what the instance number is so we can correct this? Well, if we go back to our feature manager design tree, if we need a little bit of room, we can just sort of drag this out a little bit. You can simply click on the component that you're trying to find and it will highlight in the feature manager tree. So here we can see the name of the part and then in our brackets, we've got an instance number and we can see it's actually number three. So we should be putting one comma three so that both of these ones hide. Again, we go back to our design table now that we know which number we need to fix this to. Let it load, cancel any pop-ups if they appear. And then we can click on this cell and then just go back in, change it to one comma three this time, exit out of the design table let it load and you can see now they are both suppressed. If we go back out to an isometric view, you can use do that quickly by going control seven and that will zoom extents into the isometric view for us. And we can just check our different configurations, make sure those caster wheel sub assemblies 
uh, hiding. Uh, I've had an error on this one. I'm just going to say uh, save all in this case, and then just changing between those configurations, we can see that the handle is moving correctly and the caster wheels are not showing on any of them because this is the trolley in its upright position and it doesn't need those sub-assemblies. To finish off, let's just create one more configuration for this design. This final configuration will rotate the handle by 90 degrees so that it can be used in a flatbed design. Again, we go back to edit our design table, allowing it to load and then canceling any pop-ups that appear. The first thing we need to do is put a name in it for our new configuration. We are just gonna call it flatbed. And to keep things simple, we can just copy and paste one of our cells, one of our data sets as such. And then click outside our doubt data table, click OK to any pop-ups and allow it to load. So first we need to activate the configuration flatbed that we just uh, created. So we can double click on that. Currently this configuration is just a copy, but we want the handle to fit in the other holes. So to do this, we need to suppress the mates that are being used for its current positioning. We do this by clicking on the handle Without moving the mouse, a contextual menu should appear. And then in this menu, you want to click on view mates. And these are the mates that we will need to suppress. So again, if we click, hold down shift and then click on the end, or just clicking control to select all of them without moving the mouse. So again, we see the contextual menu pop up and we want to suppress all of these. And then we can just exit that dialog. We should be able to move the handle around like I am now because those uh, mates have been suppressed. We need to add some new mates for this configuration. So we can go to the mates tool. We can use a couple of concentric mates and we're going to need this to flip around. Go OK. We need another concentric mate for this side. Click OK. And to finish, we can use a coincident mate from this surface to this surface. Click OK. Click OK again. Control 7 to zoom extent, and this is our new configuration for our flatbed design. Now that our flatbed configuration is complete, we should be able to toggle through all the configurations that we've created in this lesson. Let's give that a shot. We can double click on default. You can see this is created like this. Our setting 50, double click on that. Setting 100, setting 150, and finally our flatbed. Another thing we need, of course, in our flatbed design is for the caster wheels to be resolved so that they're showing because this will be laying down in a flatter position and it needs the wheels in this area. I think this might be the final time we go back to our design table. So right click on that, go to edit, allow to load, cancel any pop-ups. So what we want is our sub-assembly caster wheels, which is this one. Instead of being suppressed, we need those to be resolved, which just means they will show. And we also need the nuts to be resolved as well. Click outside, allow it to load. And you can see the caster wheel subassembly and the nuts are both there. And if we change to or activate one of the other ones, it disappears and it flips the uh, handle around. To take your assembly design tables to the next level, you can also specify configurations of any components or subassemblies that are used in the main assembly, all from within the one design table of your main assembly. As this video is getting a little long, I'll leave that for another time, but you may wanna take a look at it yourself. That brings us to the end of this lesson on assembly design tables. Another powerful tool within SolidWorks that allows us to create multiple versions of a design all within a single assembly file and all controlled simply through an Excel database. Keep this tool in mind as you progress and advance your skills in SolidWorks because I am sure there are going to be opportunities where you can use these design tables in your own work. If this lesson has been valuable to you, then please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And that way you can be notified when the next lesson is released. Have a quick break and then come back for the next lesson.